In the United States, Donald Trump and his lawyers will not participate in an impeachment hearing on Wednesday. The inquiry is moving from a fact-finding stage to one where the Judicial Committee will consider possible charges of misconduct. Well, the committee had invited Mr. Trump to attend the hearing, but the White House claims the inquiry is baseless and that the administration has been denied a fair opportunity to participate. The White House also complained that the hearing was purposely scheduled when Mr. Trump is out of the country. The president is scheduled to attend a summit with NATO allies in London on Wednesday. And Mr. Trump has been accused of withholding military aid for Ukraine to illegally obtain dirt on his political rivals. The UN continues to sound the alarm over a rising number of children in detention around the world, fueled by war, economic turmoil and mass migration. However, a recent UN study on child detention got pulled from many mainstream media outlets after its findings were deemed too controversial. The reason? The UN found the world's highest rate of child detentions took place during the Obama administration. The UN study was released across media wires, including Reuters and AFP, on November the 18th, headlined The US has the world's highest rate of children in detention. The following day, the UN clarified the numbers in its study come from the year 2015 and described the dire conditions of immigration detention under then-President Obama. Immediately after, the story was withdrawn, with no replacement or update story to follow. Zambia is a religious conservative country. And it has some of the toughest anti-homosexual laws in Africa. Many in this congregation are avid supporters of their president's stand against gay rights and appalled at the American diplomatic intervention. The row blew up after two men seen here with their lawyer were jailed for 15 years for taking part in what's known in the country as a crime against the order of nature, the legal term in Zambia for gay sex. Only on Sunday have police started moving vehicles from London Bridge. The cars, buses and truck have been stranded just as they were when the attacker was shot dead by police after murdering two people with his knives on Friday. It's been a still and eerie sight, snapped countless times already by curious tourists. Quicker to move has been the Prime Minister. Sensing an electoral threat or perhaps an opportunity, Boris Johnson is trying to absolve his Conservative Party of blame, despite being in power for a decade. I think this whole system of automatic early release, which was brought in by Labour, and it was under, and it was under that You've system... You've been in power for 10 it years. It was under that system. Sorry, I've, I've only been in office for 120 days. So I've, and, and, and by the way, pardon, yeah, one, of the, reasons, one of the reasons the Conservative we're Party this, has been in power for 10 years. One of the years. reasons... I think it's ridiculous, I think it's repulsive what? that individuals as dangerous as this man should be allowed out. Wading through knee-deep water, firefighters work through the night to evacuate residents from rising water in the southeast of France. While motorists caught by surprise drive through roads transformed into rivers.
Earlier on Sunday, emergency workers evacuated residents in Vaucluse as a river broke its banks after the region's floodgates gave way. People in houses further down the bank were left trapped. The southeast of France has been hit by torrential rain and flooding for the second time in a week. 1,600 emergency workers have been mobilised since Friday. Three were killed in a helicopter crash near Marseille on Sunday night after losing radio and radar contact during a rescue mission. The regions of Var and Alpes Maritimes were put on red alert as torrential rain of exceptional intensity began in the early hours of Sunday. Hong Kong Airlines is at the risk of losing its operating license if it fails to improve its financial position by Saturday. The Hong Kong government has met with the carrier and given bosses five days to save the airline. It gave two new conditions for Hong Kong Airlines to maintain its license, to raise cash and to keep it at an appropriate level. Now, Hong Kong Airlines was already struggling financially before the city's anti-government protests worsened its situation. The carrier is backed by cash-strapped Chinese conglomerate HNA Group. And back in April, it told shareholders that it needed at least $256 million in fresh funds for the airline. Today, it said it is communicating with its shareholders and other stakeholders to meet the new requirements. And staying with bad weather, worsening floods in northeast Malaysia have killed at least two people, including a seven-year-old boy. Parts of Kelantan and Trunganu are on red alert, prompting the evacuation of thousands. More than 7,000 people have sought refuge at evacuation centres in seven districts. The water level in Kelantan rose to above 10 metres, exceeding the danger level of 9 metres. Major rivers are at the risk of overflowing, and several roads have been closed because of increasing floodwaters. Malaysian weather officials have forecast that heavy rain will batter the region tonight and tomorrow, increasing the risk of landslides. The Seoul City government began a crackdown on high-emission vehicles, part of efforts to reduce fine dust. More than 400 drivers were fined on the first day. In a bid to reduce fine dust pollution, the city government has begun a crackdown on all vehicles designated Level 5, those that emit the highest level of pollutants based on government standards. Such vehicles are now banned from the newly designated Green Transport Promotion Zone between Seoul's four ancient gates from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. On Sunday, 416 drivers were each fined roughly 200 U.S. dollars. There are exceptions, however, for drivers with disabilities, emergency vehicles and cars with diesel particular filters. The new measure came into effect along the city's seasonal fine dust pollution, but it will be applied year-round. Clean natural gas now flows all the way from eastern Siberia to northeastern China. It's all possible thanks to the China-Russia East Route natural gas pipeline, the northeastern segment of which is now in use. It marks a new breakthrough in the deepening energy cooperation and strategic partnership between China and Russia. Behind me is Heihe Station, the first point on the Chinese part of the pipeline that receives Russian gas. From here, the entire pipeline will stretch across nine provinces and municipalities upon completion. And it will be the first domestically made intelligent pipeline with a large diameter, high compressive capacity and advanced welding techniques. Under a 30-year agreement between the oil and gas giants from both sides, the pipeline is expected to pump a trillion cubic meters of natural gas into China.